Only the paranoid survive, survive. The life and death battles of global businesses, the fatal decisions, the risks taken, the mistakes made inside the boardroom. We will make an absolute huge amount of money if we're right. The highest of stakes. It was a real threat for everyone. Driven by innovation. All I had was something that I knew was disruptive. It was viewed to be impossible. Blinded by fear. Let's ignore it, because we don't really know what to do with it. Desperate times and desperate measures. That was the day that I had to go. Fateful consequences. So my only question would have been why. And the lessons learned. The problem was they were wrong, and it costs everything. Aviation, in all its forms, it's enthralling. For kids, big and small, we're seduced by it. A ticket to a whole new world. What's not to love about it? Say about the aircraft, who flies aeroplane? A pilot. Pilot. Right, and where the pilot sit? In a cockpit. At the controls, imaginations can soar. From Howard Hughes to Richard Branson, history is littered with larger-than-life characters with plenty of cash who are drawn to aviation. Usually you find that these billionaires, these entrepreneurs, have very little knowledge and experience of what it is to work in the aviation industry. And so what they normally do is start up the airline, they'll probably invest quite a lot of their own money into it. Deep pockets help, but it's not enough. From Orville and Wilbur Wright's first flights, aviation has sucked in investors and money and spat them out. Running an airline is an intricate and hugely complex business. It's brought down many before. It takes vast resources and meticulous planning, as well as quick wits to make a profit. And nowhere more so than India. Aviation is a very difficult business, frankly. I feel people, promoters, get into the business, especially in India, uh, without understanding what they're getting into. Uh, frankly, um, it requires a tremendous appetite uh, to lose money. Uh, and India has the highest appetite to lose money. But one man who was undeterred and unfazed by all this is Vijay Malia, billionaire, socialite, politician, and sports mogul. He lives a life of glamour and opulence. His parties are legendary. One of India's most successful and charismatic businessmen, he was the man with the Midas touch. No one has the kind of personality Malia has. The way he talks, the way he actually mingles with people, uh, all that adds up to a persona where you, you actually feel that he's a bit of a demigod. And in 2003, he did what only a billionaire businessman can do. He set up his own airline and he named it Kingfisher. The name comes from the best-selling beer at the heart of his business empire. Kingfisher is an iconic beer brand around the world. Its market-leading dominance in India is undisputed. One out of every two beers sold there is a Kingfisher beer. And he thought he could bring his sure business touch to aviation. Dr. Malia, he ran a very, very successful liquor company prior to Kingfisher. But I think the key was that they understood consumers very well. And that's what led to them to believe that is ultimately a consumer business. Uh, you know, I, I, I believe in brands, I believe in building brands, I understand consumer. So from that perspective, uh, it was a logical, uh, some of them thought it was a logical step to go to the LA. By May 2005, Dr. Malia, as he likes to be known, was ready. Announcing the launch of the airline, everything was set for a smooth takeoff. With India's economy booming, Malia was betting it would be the perfect launch pad for the airline targeting wealthy Indians who wanted to travel around the country in luxurious style. And what Vijay and Kingfisher decided to do is go in um, with a very premium 
uh, proposition. So they were uh, set up as a full service airline and they provided a, a very good customer proposition whether you were at the front of the aircraft or you were positioned at the back of the aircraft. And that is a very similar model to, for example, Virgin Atlantic in the UK. Um, this idea of we're a full service airline, but we're not just any other full service airline, we're a very premium full service airline. For people working in India's aviation sector, the prospect of Vijay Malia starting an airline was thrilling news. It was really exciting. And when we heard the name of the uh, airline, as well as the uh, chairman's name, there actually the excitement started. And uh, there were a lot of uh, staff who came from different, different airlines. I was appointed as an in-flight manager and I was heading the flight. I was in charge of the flight where we used to fly all domestic flying. Adding to the sense of excitement was Malia's undoubted star appeal from which the airline would benefit. His public persona, persona was flamboyant. Uh, in the initial stages of his, uh, during the launch of the airline, it really worked well for him. It suited the kind of a product that he was, the kind of brand that he was, he was trying to build. Befitting a premium airline, the service on board those flights was spectacular. Welcome aboard Kingfisher Airlines. From the day we've started flying, I've tried to create the finest experience for you and bring back the element of style in travel. It was like nothing the Indian airline market had seen before. And you were never just a mere passenger with Kingfisher. Each member of your cabin crew has been handpicked by me and I have instructed them to treat you as a guest in my own home. And this wasn't idle talk, it was the real deal. Take it from one of the captains. The onboard warmth where you would get one-to-one -one personalized service to the, for the passengers, they were touched, they would come back. Once a person would travel, Kingfisher would never ever go anywhere. There was little doubt among Malia's followers that he would bring his Midas touch to bear on his new project. He had the track record. Vijay Malia is the son of a wealthy Indian brewer, Vital Malia, who started India's United Breweries Group. Vijay was forced by circumstances to take over suddenly. Giri Prakash has followed Dr. Malia's career and indeed has written the book on him. Vijay Malia was in his 20s, his father passed away after a massive heart attack. So he had to take over this huge empire and uh, a, a very fragmented empire. And he was very young, uh, inexperienced. But at the same time, he inherited his father's intelligence in terms of uh, the way he used to do business. He ran the company like a uh, extremely well professionally managed company. But being a so-called liquor baron would not be enough for VJ Malia. He expanded his United Breweries Group, buying a wide range of businesses, from spirits to pharmaceuticals to fertilizers. All of them put together ended up becoming a huge business with, with turnover running into a few billion dollars. And since then, he's added even more exotic interests, such as his Formula One and cricket teams. The reason that he associated himself with Formula One, the reason he associated himself with cricket or with uh, uh, football was the, the kind of image that he wanted to create himself. And at the same time, also bring a lot of professionalism into those kind of uh, activities as well. But back in 2005, Vijay Malia had a different ambition to apply his professionalism to. It would be a daunting task shaking up the entire Indian aviation market, ruled for many years by the likes of Air India, but by then open to newer and private operators. In an increasingly crowded market, Kingfisher would need to stand out. Because if you look at what Kingfisher's competition was, Air India, the state-owned national airline, was its, its competition, and so was Jet Airways. And alongside that, you had the low-cost carriers, Indigo Airlines and, and SpiceJet, the likes of those coming along. And so Kingfisher had to provide these premium products to ensure that it was differentiating itself from the market. But luxury alone wouldn't suffice. 
Success or failure for Kingfisher would come down to one thing, skillful management. So you need somebody that really understands the logistics of running an airline, understands how to get as much money out of each passenger as possible, and at the same time keep the costs as low as possible. And I think if you can do that, then um, you're, you're in a very good position. And it's often that these billionaires with a lot of wealth don't have that experience, um, but you, with, a, with, a, with a very good team of management and leadership, you can, you can make an airline work. And this billionaire was doing it solo. Kingfisher was ruled by Vijay Malia himself. Indeed, it reportedly had no chief executive in its early years. Without a strong management team, everything would hinge on a simple equation. The great unknown? Would India's rising economy provide enough well-heeled passengers willing to pay for premium tickets? When you build a business plan, no matter how much of structured business case you make, uh, there is, you know the cost side of it but you don't understand the challenges and revenue side of it. The cost part of it's very easy to build, uh, but there's no devil on the cost side. The devil is on the revenue, that's the greatest unknown. It would be a step into the unknown for Kingfisher, but as the airline took to the skies, tearing up the rule book for Indian aviation, there was some advice from a fellow entrepreneur, which perhaps Dr. Melia should have heeded. It would prove insightful. Richard Branson, uh, one of his famous quotes, if you ever want to become a millionaire, start with a billion pounds and start an airline, and very soon you will become a millionaire. And if he buys, buys that airline, he will be able to get into international operations. And that was his big dream. Launching in 2005 by billionaire Vijay Malia, Kingfisher Airlines was blazing a trail in India. Ladies and gentlemen, as your safety is our utmost concern, we will now brief you on the safety features on board this Kingfisher Airlines Airbus aircraft. Its service was world class, winning it many devoted fans. Thank you for flying with us today. Sit back, relax and enjoy the Kingfisher experience. As India's economy grew rapidly, so did Kingfisher. Catering for business people and the well-off, its passengers increased and increased. Customers like these Delhi lawyers were thrilled. Absolutely loved it. I think it was the best airline of its time. The hospitality was fantastic. The service was fantastic. So we were frequent flyers and we uh, had the Kingfisher Gold Card, which I still keep in my wallet. So it was fantastic flying with Kingfisher always. They uh, paid a lot of importance to um, uh, luxury and style and comfort. And of course, it didn't take long for the awards to come rolling in. We got the best luxury airline in India, best customer service award, best technical awards, Skytrex five stars. I can run out of the say fingers on the or the numbers that how many awards we won at that time. Real luxurious, yeah. Like we were the only airline. Uh, if we talk about uh, at, during those time, there were around six or seven airlines around the world who got a five star rating from a rating agency called Skytrex. Skytrex is the biggest rating agency in the aviation business. So the five-star status uh, was given to Kingfisher Airline within the first three years of our operation. So that's phenomenal. Overseeing every aspect was Vijay Malia himself. His influence writ large across the airline. The Kingfisher was Vijay Malia and Vijay Malia was Kingfisher. So the first King, first four or five years, the, everything which we did in Kingfisher was the VGM's persona glorified. Everything has to be big, has to be the biggest, has to be the best in the world. No detail was too big or too small for Dr. Malia. I can recall one of the nights when Delhi was fog bound. I have personally seen Dr. Malia sitting there more than 48 hours and coordinating the flights personally. We used to have a dedicated department in my previous company, big department, who used to do these kinds of coordination jobs. But here I saw my chairman myself doing it. It was like his baby. Under his leadership, staff were having the time of their lives. The atmosphere was pretty, pretty electric, exciting. 
uh, all the time the new people uh, new things coming up new ideas uh, meeting with chairman almost all the time uh, the best time of my life i would have said uh, of my professional life that was first two three years of kingfisher i think nothing can match even that today dr malia took great care of them like the patrician figure of what staff called the kingfisher family if you talk about perks we used to get um, uh, a queen treatment when we used to go for our night halts in different different five star hotels so wherever we used to go we used to get the best treatment especially after learning the name yes the kingfisher the kingfisher crew is coming kingfisher staff is coming although yet to turn a profit prospects were looking good passenger numbers were growing rapidly and the airline expanded fast across india under Vijay Malia's leadership, the airline was holding true to its slogan, fly the good times. Well, Vijay uh, made himself the CEO to start off with, which is fine, OK, but uh, the aviation industry has a history of having ups and downs. Uh, when it's going up, when the market demand is increasing and you're able to get very high load factors on your aircraft, it's great. You can really ride on the wave, as it were. Buoyed by the rising tide of India's economy, Vijay Malia's success seemed almost predictable. But as history had shown before, aviation is a cruel mistress. And with Malia at the helm, would the airline be ready to weather any turbulence ahead? But of course, while Kingfisher boomed, for the vast majority of Indians, traveling in such style was a distant dream. If you are flying abroad, then you need a passport and valid visa. For many, even today, will never have seen inside an aeroplane, which is where this man spotted his own business opportunity. First thing they ask whether it is real or not. Then we tell, oh, this is a real aircraft. Uh, well, I started this project for the poor people. I belong to a very small village in Haryana. It is a agriculture state of India. So that was the idea was to show the aircraft to the poor people in India, because in India, hardly, you know, 2% people, they, they fly the, they could fly in their car. To cater for the millions of Indians who could never afford to fly, let alone in the luxury of a Kingfisher jet, BC Gupta managed to wrangle an old Airbus and turn it into a visitor's attraction. They are very happy by seeing this cockpit area. They want to see how aircraft is flown, actually. They want to know each and everything, you know, like control column, throttle lever, autopilot. They ask a lot of questions, you know. Small kids, they ask very good questions. For these youngsters, it's been a great day and a lot of fun. And even if Kingfisher-style flying could still only be a dream for these kids and their families, there was one airline pursuing this exact market. It was called Air Deccan, and its ambition was to get as many Indians on board and in the air as possible. And this man was one of the original Air Deccan pilots. Uh, the punchline was uh, a billion uh, people to fly, uh, and Air Deccan is going to take out uh, time for every Indian to fly in the skies. of Indians, flying is no longer a dream. Air taken. And he managed to send a lot of people on board because he gave a lot of free tickets initially to popularize his uh, company and also fit to fill up the empty seats. So there were tickets for zero rupees to five rupees to 100 rupees, quite a few. So it was quite a uh, bumper crop for people who've not flown earlier. Air Deccan was a big hit getting many more people into the skies. But its ultra-cheap tickets were ruining the market for its competitors. What it was doing was that it was hurting the airline industry. You know, full-service carriers like Jet Airways, Air India, or Indian Airlines, they were not able to offer those kind of uh, prizes. And it, it became a huge issue for uh, the airline industry. And at one point of time, um, Dr. Vijamalia uh, said that if we don't stop Air Deccan from operating, we'll all sink. 
And under India's airline rules, there was something else which the older Air Deccan had, which Dr. Malia desperately craved, an international license. Dr. Malia realized that there's a huge opportunity. He could buy this Air Deccan, which had already, uh, was already a five-year-old airline. And if he buys, buys that airline, he will be able to get into international operations. And that was his big dream, you know? And in 2007, Malia did indeed buy Air Deccan. In what seemed a deft move, Dr. Malia took out a troublesome rival and gained access to his cherished international routes. He wasted no time ordering new planes. His decision to acquire Deccan was largely that, uh, was, was to overcome a regulatory barrier because he wanted to fly international. He wanted to fly long haul uh, from, he had the fleet committed, bought the 330s and in fact 340s and he was a, India's first customer for 380s even because he wanted to build a global airline. In September 2008, the first daily flights between Bangalore and London took off. Soon more routes were opened up. Bigger aircraft were ordered. Kingfisher would be taking on the biggest airlines across the world. So uh, his international plans was to fly to US nonstop. He was planning to do, I think, Bangalore, San Francisco. He was planning to do Delhi, New York. So North America, some parts of Europe were a critical part of his business case. And of course, these were going to be luxury havens in the skies. He customized the 330s. In fact, uh, there was like Virgin, it had a, a stand-up bar, uh, and, and, and he customized the product because he wanted to obviously cater to a different market. And it, it, it basically linked very well with his domestic perception that he built was that as a powerful uh, customer-oriented airline, premium airline. So his international was an extension of that. But while Malia was busy expanding his international routes, Kingfisher and its home market was about to have a serious identity crisis. At that point of time, Kingfisher was supposed to be this ultra uh, premium airline. So there was, it was a chalk and cheese kind of a comparison. Merging its super low cost airline with its premium airline, Kingfisher committed a cardinal sin. It lost its identity. You had a single group, which was Kingfisher and Air Deccan. Now, they rebranded that as Kingfisher and Kingfisher Red, but as a single airline, they had many more aircraft now in the fleet, and the, the demand uh, for air travel, the, that growth in air travel that they were expecting in India just didn't materialize. Instead of cutting routes, he ran the two airlines together. It led to a big problem. He was cannibalizing his own business with predictable consequences. And soon, another massive crisis would emerge, threatening the very viability of Kingfisher. It would be the end of flying the good times. Kingfisher was never profitable, so that from in the history, uh, right from 2004-05 up to 2010-11, they were not profitable. VJ Malia was battling to integrate his premium airline and his low-cost acquisition, there was further trouble ahead. Despite Kingfisher's passenger numbers surging to 12 million by 2011, its revenue wasn't stacking up. So um, Kingfisher was never profitable. So that from in the history, um, right from 2004-05 up to 2010-11, they were not profitable. So that's number one. The cost structure, uh, was not supported by fair inputs. So the costs of operating Kingfisher's pro services in the country uh, was, was very high. And the fair inputs didn't compensate the costs. There was always a wild gulf between their costs and revenues. And Air Deccan, the budget airline it bought in 2007 to gain access to international routes, was in the red too. All told, it was a grim picture. Our top story first. All good things must come to an end. That's the lesson the king of good times Vijay Malia and his company Kingfisher Airlines are learning the hard way. A mountain load of debt and insufficient revenues have brought the carrier down on its knees. Air Deccan was losing money. It had already made a loss of 1,000 crores. Kingfisher Airlines was losing money. So two negatives don't make a positive. The airlines are having a really tough 
time though making any money out of this expansion. The losses were growing, spiraling out of control. Cash was burning. It was making something like about 77,000 US dollars loss per day as a Kingfisher airline. And then when it acquired Air Deccan, that $77,000 loss per day went up tenfold to about half a million US dollars per day. And, and that was the, the real big impact. Now grappling with turning around a loss-making airline, Vijay Malia came face to face with the harsh realities of aviation in India. First of all, I would think the regulatory and policy issues are, are, are a big issue. In fact, the biggest barrier towards achieving a profitable airline business in India. The highest cost structure in the world is, is in India. The fuel cost is 60, 70% higher. Airport charges are higher. Taxation and maintenance is higher. And then the unexpected happened. The 2008 financial crisis ripped across the world, smashing the aviation sector hard. For an airline already running massive losses, the impact was devastating. And with it came sky-high oil prices. It's about 30 to 35 percent of the operating cost for all airlines essentially is in the fuel. And the fuel is governed by external forces that the airline has very little control over. So if you get a, a sudden spike or a, a gradual rise even, for example, in the cost of crude oil, then that can hit your operating costs very, very high and it can almost erode, in many cases, the, the revenue that you were generating. And that's what we saw with Kingfisher. Not only were Kingfisher's costs rising alarmingly, its passenger numbers were dropping too. And the airlines were really suffering because, first of all, passengers had less disposable income, and passengers who did have that disposable income were essentially preparing themselves for a rainy day. You know, they were saying, if we're going to be in it for the long haul, let's save our money, and if we don't need to fly, we won't fly. The assumptions made by Kingfisher about its customers proved brittle. But in actual reality, India is a very value-conscious uh, customers. On perception, you know that they buy these luxurious brands and, and have these jets and stay in five-star deluxe hotels. That a logical conclusion is that uh, I would have uh, this would be the customer base for my airline. But the problem is that there are not enough customers who would subsequently want to pay the kind of fares that are required. Uh, people have misread the market. The sure-footed prowess Vijay Malia had brought to his other businesses seemed to fall short. His faith in his ability to connect with consumers began to be exposed. You cannot run an airline industry like the way you run a liquor industry. A liquor industry is high margin, high volume, high margin. In the airline industry, it's exactly the opposite. And almost everything is dynamic. Whereas in the liquor industry, if you set a price, you, you can manufacture, it's not a perishable commodity, you can keep it for days together. In fact, if you, if you have whiskey and it, it, it gets weathered, it gets matured, the price will only go up. Whereas you lose a seed, it's gone, it's perishable. It was a perfect storm. Kingfisher desperately needed to cut costs and to get more cash. Vijay Malia turned to the banks which had funded him, but now the taps had been turned off. The news is tightening around Vijay Malia and Kingfisher Airlines. Kingfisher, the... will the recovery from Kingfisher Airlines promoter or Vijay Malia Kubija? Clearly, banks had, had almost given up and said that we're not going to fund you anymore. And uh, he couldn't raise capital. You were burning millions of dollars every year. So you needed cash to support it. So he couldn't go to get a foreign airline. He couldn't go to a bank. He couldn't raise capital. With banks reluctant to pour more cash into loss-making airlines, Vijay Malia had to turn elsewhere to keep his show on the road. He started using the funds, the, pro the profits of his other group companies, which are extremely profitable entities, United Spirits, United Breweries, uh, Mangalore Chemicals and Fertilizers. He started using those money, that money as well. If he couldn't get it from the lenders, he would take money from them. And then at some point of time, the money had to dry up, okay? Because he started defaulting on payments. By now, Kingfisher was heading into a terminal decline. And with Vijay Malia at the controls, he seemed paralyzed, unable to take the drastic action needed to turn things around. To be honest, that has surprised me till date as to why there was not a sense of urgency in, in making those corrections. You could have cut your fleet 
to a reasonable size, you would have restructured, cut, cut your operations, retrained some of the staff, done something so that your cost and revenue sort of a mismatch is reduced significantly. Uh, but obviously he, 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 didn't, he didn't make those corrections. But something had to give, and the airline's international flights were the first to be affected. But even for staff, it came as a shock. Taslim, one of Kingfisher's cabin crew, was about to take a flight home from her honeymoon. I saw a lot of chaos outside the Kingfisher counter, you know, a lot of people standing, there was a lot of queue. Initially, I thought the flight is overbooked, so that is how there's so much of a chaos. And then when I went there, uh, I got to know that uh, the flight's cancelled. So that was our first flight which was cancelled, actually. And uh, an international flight, of course, you know. So, I mean, this was something which I actually couldn't believe. It was a sign of things to come. So from one flight to th two flights, to three to four flights started getting cancelled in a day. Not only were flights being cancelled, staff payments were already falling behind, and this would escalate dramatically. Mid-2011 was a salary getting delayed by a couple of days, eventually a fortnight, months, two months. Reminders till November, uh, December 2011, we had about six months salary pending. The situation ran on for months and months. As banks and the government refused to help, Vijay Malia urged his staff to keep working despite the hardships they faced. We used to get mails from him. Don't worry, we are getting it done. The aircraft is here, so the salaries is coming up. So what I used to happen was, say maybe after four or five communication mails, he used to get one month salary, so that we can still survive with the expenses. He kept on giving hopes that it, it would be coming, 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 but nothing was coming forward. Kingfisher's bosses promised again and again that all would be well. Staff needed to trust them and to be patient. So everybody stayed put, everybody cooperated, no question marks. Because everybody was living on a hope that yes, if, if money is not being given to us or to, if there's an issue, I'm sure it is being used for good purposes, whereby maybe we are sowing seeds now which we will get the fruits later. Whatever reasons were given by the management were accepted without question. So why did they carry on working when it was clear the airline was in dire straits and they hadn't been paid for months? Just one name, VJM. We knew him as a, as a fighter. We knew him that he is a survivor. We knew him that he survived odds in the past. Maybe he's down, but he's not out. Under Dr. Malia's leadership, staff continued to believe that all would be well, but it would prove to be misguided. Everybody was living on that faith. Faith not only on this gentleman, but faith in the system that, oh, such a big company can't go down. By mid-2012, Kingfisher Airlines was in desperate straits. The global financial crisis, enormous debts, and a failed merger were crippling it. As Kingfisher struggled to keep afloat, the stresses were weighing heavily on staff, perhaps even compromising that most crucial aspect of any airline, safety. Now, we had a classic example of stress pilots flying way back in 2011, 12, two full years, where a pilot who is to take decision at 1,000 kilometers an hour in split second, we want him to fly with a revolver on his head, not having been paid for the last 10 months. The end was coming fast. In October 2012, the authorities moved in. The regulator, the Director General of Aviation, decided that enough was enough. They said that you, you start paying the pilots because if you don't pay the pilots, you're endangering the lives of the passengers. Paying bills becomes more important than flying those aircraft. Other considerations come in, they get, they get distracted. 
So it's it's a very dangerous situation to be in for a passenger. For staff, it was the moments they had been dreading. As I said, when I walked into the gate and you know the premises, in fact, I saw the office gate locked. I was shocked. I mean, very clueless about what had happened, and uh, that's when I got to know that the authorities had locked the uh, office gate. And of course, all my hopes, my dreams, everything was shattered. I mean, I was just on my head was spinning, and I really didn't know what I was going through because, as it is, I was already, you know, pregnant, and I was already in that stage of life where this kind of a pressure was something which I was really not being able to take. The business was shuttered. Planes were impounded. Offices bolted, licenses revoked. When the airline lost its license, uh, it was the end for for the for Kingfish Airlines, and um, for Dr. Vijay Malia personally, um, it was a major hit to his pride. Whatever that that the kind of dreams that he had for the for the airline uh, was, was shattered. But it was, of course, much, much worse for his staff. I still remember that night, and I still remember the impact it had on my father, because he already was a stroke patient. So uh, as soon as he got to know this, I mean, you know, he got uh, his convulsion attack, and we had to rush him uh, to the Max Hospital. And uh, he was there. He was in ICU for three days. So. It was a very tough time, you know. I, I still feel it was a nightmare. I still feel that actually, I mean, did this actually happen? Nobody could think of Kingfisher ending this way, you know. The times we had seen and, you know, that last one year was a true nightmare for us. Kingfisher's staff were at a loss. The airline was dissolving in front of their eyes, and now they were due many, many months of pay. Mine would be around 10 months' salary, so it was nine and a half months, 10 months' salary is due, still due. The financial hardships caused some shocking stories, according to this lawyer. I received a phone call where I was told that an employee was suffering from cancer. He didn't have money for his treatment. He used to call up the company that at least pay me something so that I can take care of my medical expenses. He was not paid. I was horrified that how a company in India can deal with its employees like this. I was told that they have not been paid salaries for over years, two years, two and a half years, they have not been paid. They have been given false hopes, false promises that they will be paid their salaries. The same chairman and managing director in 2012, in a declaration to all the employees, in a communication to all the employees, had specifically said, that the company is going to revive. This is the promise which made the employees stick with the company, work with the company, and by the end of the time, till today, no payments have been made. But then the story gets worse. Staff not only haven't been paid, some of their income tax, which was deducted by Kingfisher, never made it to the government's coffers. All companies in India, they have to take taxes. Whatever an employee earns, they take part of that as taxes and then de deposit it with the, with the government of India. Now, that part, he was not doing it. He was collecting the taxes from the employee's salaries, but he was not depositing it to the, with, the, with the government. He took that money and used it to fund the uh, operations. In some ways, employees were actually giving him money back to run the, the airline. For staff, including senior pilots, this was a shocking discovery, and it carried serious consequences for them. So that the tax deduction at source has been done by the company, Kingfisher, but not paid to the ones concerned. So I'm a defaulter as far as uh, the income tax of India is concerned. Captain Rajiv is far from alone. Fellow pilot Captain Monish is another facing difficulties as a result of Kingfisher's actions. The last salary I got was for June of 2012, so from June till the November 2012, I have not been paid. 
plus the income tax that has been deducted for three years before that is 2009, 10, 10, 11, 11, 12, has been deducted and not been paid to the government of India. It's like we are sitting on a time bomb. It's like a sword on my head even today. Ironically, the very passengers who thought so highly of Kingfisher are now the lawyers behind some of the few successful legal cases. So the uh, courts have been very sympathetic towards the pilots and their dues and their uh, conditions as they have been working really hard and uh, they posed a lot of trust, faith and confidence in Dr. Malia and his organization. So uh, the courts, were, the judges were very uh, sympathetic. In fact, they came down very harshly on Kingfisher. In any case, with few assets remaining and a long line of creditors, including big banks, the prospects of staff getting their pay from the Kingfisher Empire are slim. Like I said, 2012, October, from the time I saw the lock in the door, till now, now it's 2015. So it took me two long years to make myself understand and believe that I'm not going to get back what they owe me. In a statement, Vijay Malia's office said, Dr. Malia has varied business interests over the past 35 years, but these are separate corporate entities. The UB Group invested over 600 million US dollars into Kingfisher Airlines, showing more than the required level of shareholder commitments. Kingfisher had three CEOs with experience in aviation. All employees who showed up for work were paid. Tax payments were electronically processed and that frequently the India tax authorities make mistakes. Kingfisher say they were not aware of the medical case we raised and that any employee facing unusual distress was assisted fully. Yet there's an unmistakable sense of betrayal among staff who were devoted to Kingfisher. That's the personality change we, like as a person I saw, because we, I, like we, we used to say, sort of worship him, the way he used to take care of his employees during the first four, five years of Kingfisher. We got everything, we used to get free tickets, we used to get family parties, everything used to happen at that time. He used to come, uh, come to the family parties, mingle around with all, all the families. So even today what happens is he still owes us, owes us money, but we still see that he's sitting in uh, some island or he's still driving the racing cars worth a few crore rupees. Everybody was living on that faith. Faith not only on this gentleman, but faith in the system. That, oh, such a big company can't go down. But I think we were proved wrong. We horribly wrong. The collapse of the company does not seem to have dented Vijay's confidence. Nor, it seems, does he feel that he was responsible for the plight of his crew or airline. I can only go by the kind of statement that he has made to the shareholders of um, United Breweries. There he has uh, explicitly stated that if not for the Lehman Brothers crash, American slowdown, uh, the economic crash that happened there, uh, and the oil prices going up, he would still have been able to run that airline. So he still actually believes, or he wants everybody to believe that it was not his fault. But this, unsurprisingly, is not a view shared by all. He was this as central as you could get. Everything revolved around him. He couldn't build a management culture or a management structure which was commensurate with the size of their operations because at one point of time, they were almost flying 89 planes. Um, it had a, over a billion dollar turnover, pretty large operation. It was centered around Dr. Malia. Uh, it brought some good elements to it because his own persona, his, him, you know, uh, his, his connections with the media, with the business that, that got the benefits to the airline. But you needed a management which could do the back end, could create a cost structure, align with the kind of operations, build the middle and down, down the line management. That, that to some extent was completely missing there. And the Kingfisher fiasco appears not to have dampened his enthusiasm for other businesses, nor his capacity to spend money. But this sits uneasily with the lawyers working to claim some of the unpaid salaries of their clients. The same man is spending so lavishly on uh, 
different other things so as to say i mean just to give examples like a cricket team or a formula one we all understand that different companies are different corporate entities the, the person behind the show is the same man i remember one of his statements that i'm not going to sell my silver to pay pilot so which which is a very harsh comment i would say this is bad that's what i'm saying i think the only worst part which we ever thought about bad about him was after the close we never like uh, and the the d and the communication not happening and then when we look at him today when we uh, look at him or his family or his business empire is still intact and what we uh, the people lost was people like us people like our family in kingfisher he still not he still he still owns the empires so what next for those willing to keep fighting for what is owed to them there is a provision under the code where he can be arrested and kept in civil prison until and unless he makes his payments so that is one course that we are planning to take if the management does not pay the salaries the outstanding dues to the pilots who have the decree in their favor there are only a small number of cases in the courts but for some there are more critical questions that still need answering fundamental issues about trust between employees and employer and responsibility for when things go wrong i remember that very proud moment when i had called my parents to stage and they shared the stage with me while i was receiving the award from dr malia when i look back i still feel that was it actually a dream that dr malia was an amazing personality an amazing person he was a people's person then so what happened to him later what changed him i think my only question would be why shutting the airline i understand but he could have cleared our dues what he did to us was wrong and especially to people who have been loyal to him who stood by him so my only question would have been why dr malia